Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Game Engine in Java series. In this episode, we will be continuing our journey with the scene hierarchy panel, which is this thing right here. Specifically, we will be creating this functionality to rename objects. So you can see this is called Sprite Object Gen, but if I change it here, I can change it to Game Object. And you can see it also changes dynamically down here as well. And if we go ahead and change another object's name here, you can see that it changes in the scene hierarchy panel. We will also start to implement our drag drop functionality. So I can pick up this object, then I'm dragging around this little phantom object here. And then you can see if I highlight over any of these objects, it highlights yellow unless I'm highlighting over the object I started from. Then we can drop this into a new object and we'll get a notification that we had a payload dropped. So we'll be looking at how to do all of this in today's episode. Before we start coding, let's take a look at the way drag and drop works in IM GUI. Drag and drop in IM GUI is actually pretty simple to wrap your mind around. I wanted to go over it real quickly just that there's no confusion whatsoever about how this works though. So the way drag and drop works in IM GUI is you have these payload objects and these payload objects consist of a type and the object that your payload is. So say the user starts dragging an object. What do we know? Well, we know the user can only ever be dragging a single object or maybe like a collection of objects, but they can only be dragging one thing at any given time, right? Because the user only has one mouse. So IM GUI gives us this global context, which is the payload. And we can use this global context anywhere in our code. So we can say IM GUI begin drag drop payload. And while the user is dragging that object, we set whatever the payload is and it will stay this payload and persist over several frames which is actually kind of uncommon in IM GUI since most of data is dynamic and not persisted over several frames but then we can also accept that payload and as long as it has the same type we can accept that object now what is the type the type is not the object's type so if this was a game object we're not saying accept anything of game object type the type is just a string and the string is set by the user and what you want to set it to is something unique because you basically want to have for every drag you have a drop and so for every drag source we want to have a unique type that corresponds to the same drag source so we'll be calling our type something like scene hierarchy and i've been spelling hierarchy wrong too so i'm gonna try and fix that in this video but basically that means that any drop source will accept anything with the type of scene hierarchy which was set by this drag source and anything else will not accept this. So it's pretty simple. I mean, it's straightforward what you would expect. Another thing to note is you can only type in up to 32 characters in this type. This is not a limitation in IM GUI if you're writing in C++, but it is a limitation of the library we're using in Java. And I'm not really sure why this was chosen because I exceeded it very quickly when I tried to create a type of more than 32 characters. Anyways, though, let's go ahead and see how this works in the actual code. I'm back in the code right where we left it, which was uh, refactoring it a little bit. And I'm going to mention something before we start real quick. Notice how I have the docking. And also, if I minimize this, I have the viewports enabled. So uh, all the code that I had was correct. The one thing that I had was wrong, which thank you to the person who pointed this out. I can't remember your username right now, but uh, it's in the comments if you want to see who pointed that out in the last episode. Inside of IM GUI layer, uh, basically when we were setting the input flags, the only thing we had to do was say add config flags, not set. Because if we set, we're setting it to one, whereas we really want to add two. And yeah, this is a little bit different because inside the actual IM GUI code, you would basically say something like io.flags equals or or equals and then put your flag there, which I kind of like. And you can't really do that in the Java syntax. But anyways... Just change this to add config flags, uncomment the code we had, and you should have docking and viewports enabled and working fine. Now, let's get into what we need to do to make this code work. The first thing we're going to need, because I'm going to work on having that name pop up so you can edit the game object's name, we're going to need to put that in somewhere. And I like putting it in the transform just because I do think it makes sense. Uh, like Unity's code has the name of the game object in here, and I think that does kind of make sense in this case too. And so we're basically just going to go ahead and say right in here game object dot name equals and then we're going to create a control called jim gui dot input text 
label is going to say name and then we're going to pass in the game object name and we have to do it this way because we are assigning it and we can't just pass by reference like we did here because it just doesn't work with strings as well as i would like anyways let's go ahead and go into jim gui and create that input control so inside of jim gui i'm going to scroll down to the bottom and let's just go ahead and copy this and we'll use this as sort of our base uh, first of all we're going to change this to a string and then we're going to change this to say input text and we are going to take in a label and this will say string text. So this will just be whatever text is in there currently. We're not going to need this result and we should be able to just push the label as the ID as well. That should be fine. And this should all be fine too. That will just say name. Then right here, what we're going to do is say I am string out string. So this is sort of how we're going to edit it is a new I am string text. So whatever they pass in, and then this is important, make sure you give it 256 as length. So this means that they can input uh, game object names up to lengths of 256 characters. You may make that longer, you may not. It depends on what your needs are. Um, it's really hard to find a good length for something like this, but you do need to input it because it is important that your engine's not allocating memory everywhere. And this is one of those things that I'm GUI does to ensure that we only ever have, have 256 buffer characters set aside. So 256 bytes. Anyways, we'll say if I am GUI dot input text and the label we're going to say is hashtag hashtag plus label. So that will hide the label so we don't see it. And then we're going to give it the out string. And that will basically just give us the I am GUI label or editor for our text. So it's like a little text input editor. And then we can say I am GUI dot columns one. So if they did edit it, we just want to exit early and then we'll say I'm GUI dot pop ID. And then we'll say return out dot get or out string dot get. So we're basically just doing this part, which makes sure we don't get a pop push error. And then we just return the new string. Otherwise, if the user didn't do anything, we'll, we'll do those pop in the columns again, and then we'll just say return text. So we'll return what they passed in. That way we're not creating a new string or anything. We're just using the same object, which should hopefully help out a little bit. Anyways, if we go back into transform now, you should see that that's fine. And if we go ahead and start up the engine and then click onto one of these objects and click it over here, I'm going to click the transform and actually clicking it over here doesn't do anything. If I try and change this now to Gabe, you can see that it changes it up here as well. And if I go ahead and click onto a new object, this is kind of interesting. You'll notice that it automatically changes the name here. Now that's just because it's kind of a quirk of I am GUI since we're using the same input text, it sort of copies over the data, which is undesirable. Now I haven't found a solution for this yet, but once I do, I'll update you guys with that solution. For now, if it changes it, if you don't want it to change it, you could change it here. If you click out and lose focus, then you click into a new object you'll notice that it did not change the name. So that's just a quirk. Uh, you could do something like lose focus if they do change it, which could be annoying. So it's it's just very iffy on how you want to go about doing that to make sure it doesn't copy it over to the next one. Anyways, with that aside, that is the first part of what we were looking to do. Now let's go into the scene hierarchy window. And I'm actually going to rename this because I am I don't like having typos in my code. And I should have seen too, because IntelliJ even told me, look at this, it says typo in word hierarchy. And I just did not notice that. So we're going to go ahead and refactor this rename. And this should be IE, not EI. I guess this is just a quirk of English. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, with that spelled correctly and right here as well, we should be good to continue. Now, uh, one of the things I'm going to do just to kind of consolidate our code is create a private Boolean do tree node and this way we can have all of our tree node code in here and then we're just going to copy all of this paste it into here then we're going to go ahead and say tree node open equals do tree node and we're actually going to have to pass it a couple of variables too it says we need an index and we need a game object so we'll just say pass in the game object which we'll call obj and pass in an index which we'll call int index then we'll just pass those in over here so we just pass in obj index and we should be good. Cool. So this is functionally the same if we were to run this uh, after we return the tree node. So if we were to run this, we won't get any changes. We've just refactored a little bit of code. Uh, it's going to move it over here for me just because that's what it does when you reset things like this. But 
it is the same code. Nothing's changed. Now what we're going to do is create the drag drop source payload. So how do we do that? Well, immediately after the thing that you want to become a drag drop payload, which in our case is the tree node. Okay. So the tree node is this here, right? We want to click this, be able to drag it. That is the tree node. We want that to be our drag drop source. So immediately after we finish doing stuff with it, we say, if I'm GUI dot begin drag drop source, which says if the user clicks on it and begins dragging it. And then right after this, we'll say if, because we want this to be a source and we also want it to be a target. I am GUI dot begin drag drop target. So this says if they're hovering over it with a source in their hand already. So this basically does what we want it to do. Now, after we begin the drag drop source, we can never forget to I am GUI and drag drop source. And likewise, we can never forget to and drag drop target. All right, now what do we do in the in-between part? Well, we basically want to say if they're starting to drag something, so we're in the source, we want to set the payload to whatever game object they just clicked on, right? Well, what object did they just click on? It's the object attached to this. So we can say I am GUI dot set drag drop payload. What type do we want it to be? I said we could just call it something like scene hierarchy. Uh, and then we want to set it as an object. So I'm going to say uh, OBJ. So we want to set it as the game object and the original I am GUI code just looks like this, but we have an extra function in the Java version where we can say set drag drop payload object and we set it to our game object there. Now that's good. We set the object and everything. How do we get the text there? Well, the next thing you do, you can say I'm GUI dot text. Okay. And I'll explain how this works in just a minute and we're going to give it the name and that should be it. Okay. So we just set drag drop payload. We do this text thing. Then we get this end drag drop source. Now let's see how this works real quick. Okay. So if we click onto one of these, we start dragging it. You'll notice it says sprite object gen. How do we get this hovering part, right? How, why is it saying sprite object gen? Whatever you put in between these two lines of code. So in between set drag drop payload in between end drag drop source, whatever I am GUI code you put there, it will end up as the object. So we could also go, I am GUI dot, uh, I don't know, button. And then we're going to say, uh, this is a button. Okay. If we hit shift F10 build and run this and we drag, look at that. We now got a text element and a button in there. So you could add as much stuff as you want. You could add images, you could add whatever the heck you want to add there. And it will sort of just set that to the payload, which is really cool because this allows you to enable cool features like dragging an image from a texture uh, picker or, you know, anything else you want to do. We're just going to leave it as the text because I think that's descriptive enough for what we need. Now inside I'm going to begin drag drop target. How does this work? Well, we say object payload object, or I'm just going to say OBJ equals I am GUI dot accept drag drop payload object. What type we need to make sure it's the same type we put up there. So scene hierarchy. And this leads me to the next part, which if you look at the I'm GUI code and what he does in his examples, he actually does something like this. And I like this. We'll say private static string, uh, payload drag drop type equals, and I'm just going to do that. And then we'll delete the extra quotes so that we have those deleted. And then we're going to replace these this way. You can't make a typo. And if you ever refactor something, all you have to do is change the string in here and then that will change everything. So this is definitely uh, the best way to do something like this. And it just makes sure that we don't shoot ourselves in the foot with something stupid. Anyways, so we get the payload object and we say if the payload object is not null. So this means they are dragging something. Well, we still have to check and see if it actually is a game object because they could be dragging anything, right? Technically it should, since we're accepting only objects that have been dragged with this type, it should be the object we're looking for because this will only, will not be null, uh, only if we have the correct type, but it's always good to check. And he has this in his code. So I'm assuming it's probably good to do this anyway. So we'll say if payload object dot dot class dot is assignable from game object dot class. So we know we definitely have a game object here. Then we're going to, what we're going to do is say game object player game object equals game object payload object. And then we're going to say system dot out dot print line payload accepted uh, single quote plus player. This is just for testing real quick dot name plus single quote. Let's see if we get what we expect. So now I should be able to drag these. If I go ahead and drag, 
you can see that it drags over this and I don't think this is working properly, but let's drop it in here. See if we get any, nope, we did not get any messages. So I made a typo or something. And this actually brings me to a bug that I missed in the last video. So the reason we weren't getting the payload accepted is because all of our objects share the same ID currently. And the reason they share the same ID is because we're pushing index, which if we look at index before I had it like this. So index was always zero. And I pointed this out in my last video in editing, but I never actually fixed it in the code. So if you just add in this line index plus plus, then what you'll see when we run this is if you drag the object and you can see that it highlights over the different objects. And if we drop it, we should see sprite object gen was accepted and we get that right here. Now, why does this matter? If we don't have a unique ID here, a unique index or whatever, just anything, then IM GUI is going to end up thinking that every single, because it associates with ID, it doesn't associate with anything else. And since we're explicitly setting the ID here, um, which we need to, because in the case of a tree node, it kind of expects it. So you could also change this to just object on name. I changed that for testing purposes and it should work the same. Yep. Uh, but basically this just ensures that it knows that each of those is a unique object and you're not trying to drag it into itself because uh, one of the other features of this drag drop payload is if you try and drag it into itself, you notice it doesn't get the yellow highlights and that's because you can't drag an object into itself. It doesn't make sense, which is good. But let's just make sure this really works. We'll change this name to Gabe and then we'll drag this into here. We should see that Gabe was accepted as a payload. Drop that. And if we look up here, we see payload accepted Gabe. Okay. Anyways, that is a very brief introduction to I'm going to drag and drop payloads and all that stuff. It is uh, interesting stuff. One of the things we're going to learn about right after in the next episode is about dragging into this window. Because right now, if we drag into this window, it can't accept anything as a payload because it's not a drop target, <laughs> okay? But that's important because what we want to be able to do is to drag things in between. So if we drag the mouse in between these two objects, we want to sort of say, hey, we're reordering here, which is a feature you'll notice in the Cocoa Engine when I showed you that. And we'll talk about how to make all of those implementations in the next episode. Real quick, before I leave, I do want to say, I'm sorry I haven't been releasing as often. It's just really hard to come by time right now. And it's really hard to come by motivation to be working on the practice engine, my normal engine, and then my full-time job. So I'm trying to continue to release weekly. Hopefully I will be able to keep that pace up and hopefully the videos continue to come. And I don't want to lower the quality, which is another reason why I haven't been releasing as much. So I hope you guys can be patient with me as I try and get through this time. And hopefully the videos will start to come a little bit more regularly in the near future. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode where we talk about dragging and dropping into the window as a payload source or target. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you then.